welcome back everybody and today we're going to try something different uh, I've got some terrain that needed to be painted and I've got some dirty down rust and all I've used it for previously is to effectively dab on some spots on rocks on bases to make it look like it's iron oxide but uh, it's time to try and actually use it to its uh, design intent which is to create the appearance of rust and uh, I started off just using a basic uh, black prime and uh, thought I'll put some on over the top of that just to get a feel for how it actually works and uh, obviously the trick is with this stuff apparently is to get it warm it says so on the instructions so the simplest way to do that is either use uh, some form of hair dryer or stick it in your pocket for 20 minutes uh, and get it up to a reasonable temperature you're also supposed to have the element that you're painting uh, paint uh, also at a similar sort of temperature uh, apparently it works better that way I have no idea uh, but I started playing with it anyway and just dabbing it on and sure enough uh, it seems to dry relatively quickly you don't have much working time with it uh, so you just work straight out of the bottle and I tried using brush application first and then I compared that with using a sponge method to see if the texture is different and whether that actually creates a different appearance and it certainly seemed to have a different effect and you can see as I'm dabbing it on that it dries relatively quickly uh, you don't have to wait long to get the result and uh, there's the comparison of the two and you can see it's a bit thicker uh, less dispersed uh, when you use a brush uh, so it depends on whether you're going for a modeled appearance or whether you want a solid appearance now I wanted to get a little bit creative and not just use it the way everyone else does it which is as a final coat over the top of everything else making it look like the rust is sitting on the surface and uh, so instead of doing that what I chose to do was try and actually paint over the top of it and I had the bright idea of maybe uh, using a chipping medium or in this case here it was Vallejo's uh, masking compound uh, to dab on the expectation was that I would apply this uh, paint over the top of it and then should be able to rub off the masking compound revealing the rust behind the paint layer that was the plan and it seemed to be a relatively good plan uh, until I actually tried to put it into practice and we'll get to that in a minute uh, but my choice here was to use speed paint now speed paint is a very wet medium to begin with and this is speed paint 1.0 not 2.0 which is the reactivating kind and what I was hoping for was to paint that over the surface and to have some of that coloration bleed through and uh, I actually tried a few different things along the way and uh, we'll get to comparisons of conventional paint versus the speed paint using this method uh, the trick here obviously was to reactivate the rust slightly but we don't want to go overboard with the brushing sideways because effectively you'll just remove the whole lot so I was tended to dab more than sort of brush and as the paint starts to run thin on the brush you'll notice that it starts to pick up more of the rust and move that around and uh, so I sort of got a reasonable result from that and what I did notice was having the texture on the barrels with the chipping medium actually provided sort of areas where the speed paint would sort of grip on and concentrate so you get a really nice sort of focused effect it looks like there is physical corrosion underneath and I tried a couple of different colors uh, primarily sticking with the light colors I used the holy white and also the green color there and mix the two together to make a sort of opaque looking kind of green coloration that would be a bit different and uh, the colors tend to be obviously quite transparent and you can see through so you can see the base coat coming through which is kind of like the paint wearing off and it's thicker in uh, around the edges where it would accumulate so that's fine so I was somewhat uh, happy with the outcome of that application but you can't see much of the rust and after a quick little dry brush I decided to dab on some more over the surface 
and uh, give that a bit of a sort of uh, focused rust points to sort of strengthen the appearance. So it's a bit of putting some underneath the paint and getting that to mobilize and then coming back and doing some more over the top. Uh, now I've been trying the light colors, so I thought, okay, I'll try another speed paint. This Slaughter Red seems to be more opaque rather than translucent. And I thought, well, that might actually work. Uh, now I'm giving it a little bit more streaking and I did notice that the darker colors tend to sort of obscure the effect of the rust, but uh, one full application there. And once it dries, it does become quite dark. And I had the chipping medium, sorry, not the chipping medium, uh, the masking compound on there. And you just have to rub it with something like an eraser to mobilize it. And unfortunately, as you can see, uh, taking that off seems to have also removed some of the dirty down rust that was applied. So you end up with sort of maybe some rust showing, but not as much as you'd like. And I think possibly the medium itself kind of uh, loosens the hold of the dirty down rust. So you end up seeing more of your undercoat than you do of the rust. So that didn't quite work as planned. Maybe I need to put the rust on thicker. So that'll be a trial for another day. Uh, but the end result of the darker barrels, they didn't look too bad. Uh, a bit strange and splotchy with sort of some areas uh, remaining red, uh, the rest being a dark color. So I went back in with more dirty down rust to place it over the top. And it's a bit hit and miss sometimes with the finish on that. Because it's going over speed paint 1.0, the rust itself also reactivates the speed paint and it tends to dilute the speed paint and you don't necessarily get uh, the full sort of rust appearance. Now for comparisons, I thought I will try a standard paint. So I've got the white paint, which is the standard air paint from Army Painter, but I did put because the holy white is more gray and I thought, okay, well, what if I put some speed paint medium in with the uh, standard white paint and uh, see how that works. And uh, it is a more vi vivid white. Again, just dabbling it on over the top and around in areas to see how it went. And another comparison, I thought I'll try a gray. So I got another air gray, only this time no speed paint medium. I've just put this on straight. And uh, the outcome of trying standard paint versus anything that's either been modified or is a straight speed paint is that you tend to get, when it dries, a really mottled appearance. The brush strokes are very evident, uh, whereas with speed paint, it tends to pull away from the flat surfaces, accumulates in the sort of the low points and uh, gives a better overall smoother transition. And uh, so scratch that idea, stick with the speed paints and uh, try a darker one. And uh, this is manufacturing again, using a dark green uh, in the air paint and putting a speed paint medium. So it's a 50-50 mix of the two and just dabbing that on and you get quite a nice sort of patina finish. Now this is on a metallic base and it's the Stonal Res Metal Primer. But what I did was I mixed the black 50-50 to make it somewhat dark. And uh, I was a bit concerned about the masking compound potentially rubbing off. So I thought I would try some variation using, instead of the chipping compound, trying to get the same sort of finish using Mod Podge instead of the masking medium. And uh, you can clearly see uh, it sort of leaves a sort of a shine, whereas the masking compound tends to uh, be a little bit sort of different. It also tends to have more texture to it. Uh, but uh, look, it was a comparison anyway. I think if you leave the compound on long enough, it will probably harden and not come off so easily, depending upon how often you handle it. Now, I did try some other sort of options uh, with the coloration using real st speed paints and uh, just tried a, a green and a blue. Now, this was over a straight metal uh, undercoat rather than actually a dark color. And it unfortunately because of the translucency of the paint you can clearly see that they just look like green and blue metallic sort of cylinders uh, you don't really see very much of the rust it tends to just get washed away and it's more uniform in terms of its coloration so that was a bit of a fail 
and uh, so left that alone and kept with the lighter colors primarily and uh, obviously you don't see much of the rust coming through uh, it is uh, sort of bleeds into the paint and what you can do is go in and add more of the rust by stippling it onto the surface but it tends to have a finish that isn't always uh, so realistic and if you mobilize it uh, and be very careful because obviously it's speed paint underneath you can actually create a more natural sort of uh, bleeding effect from the rust uh, to provide more of a, a realistic look and uh, another comparison that I thought I'd do was applying the top coats over the rust compound but using an airbrush rather than actually trying to use a physical brush and have that disturbance of the layer underneath now I didn't know whether the wet paint would sort of reactivate the rust or not so I tried a couple of different options uh, and also using different primers and my preference really is the darker colors as a primer don't use plain gray that's a abysmal failure uh, even though yes for contrast paints they say to use that but uh, you end up with just something that's really just uh, nondescript and terrible uh, so the dark colors either dark metallic or black definitely works best and you can see when you spray directly over you don't really mobilize you end up with a bit more of a hard edge uh, you get some of the color showing through because the it, the actual paint is a little bit thin uh, so maybe that's an option you can possibly go back in and try it again now lucky last I decided to try and actually make the rust compound into a speed paint by mixing it 50 50 with the speed paint medium to see what sort of finish you could get with that and this is on sort of a darkened metal uh, base coat and uh, applying it it does effectively what you would expect it does start to pull and the end result is you sort of get a goldish type patina on the metallics uh, you do get some concentration and it's quite a subtle effect uh, it's somewhat quite realistic in that uh, regard but uh, the coloration of the rest of the metal probably isn't what you're after perhaps but it does pull uh, so you can sort of play around with that but uh, in the end certainly my preference would be to use possibly just a black uh, undercoat on anything apply the rust dirty down rust with maybe a sponge and having some texture whether it be like a masking compound or a texture paint which I don't have and dabbing that on to create some form of grip because if you're painting uh, the top coats on particularly with the speed paints uh, they tend to accumulate around the rough edges and you get sort of a, a more natural bubbling rust effect underneath so the white I found is probably the best you get a very light gray finish uh, as opposed to the white barrel that you can see there uh, the darker colors they work quite well as well the green worked out relatively well over a metallic base so you don't really need to do much of an edge highlight with the silver to come in after that as opposed to the red color uh, but uh, look this has just been an exercise in me playing around uh, not really an instructional video on how to but uh, I just wanted to paint some terrain and I wanted to have a bit of uh, a grim dark theme and I thought that this might be an approach to take so we have got to the end of the video again thank you everyone for tagging along for something of a bit of a deviation from the normal painter space marine so hope to see you in the next one and thanks for taking the time to watch it.